Okay, welcome back into my Vanguard portfolio update now for the month of April. I think again, it's fair to say that this month has been a pretty interesting one. Just before we go into the portfolio live, let's do a quick roundup of everything that's been going on in the markets over in the US and also close to home here in the UK. Firstly, if we just head over the pond to the US, I think it's fair to say that the markets had a little bit of a shaky kind of stop at the moment. The market's not been going up every single week in a vertical line to brand new all time highs, but we will touch on that on the UK in just a moment. Let me just quickly pop on screen now the S&P 500, which is a good gauge of what's going on in global markets and also in the US markets. You can see it is down 4% for the month, which is pretty poor performance so far, although it's still up on a year to date basis, just over 5.6%. Now, funny enough, as I was actually going to record this video yesterday, I was going to have an even more negative sentiment because the market had dropped over 5% and wasn't up quite as much for the year. But it just shows how quickly things can very much change as we head into a new week. And just generally on that point, I wanted to kind of reinforce and remind everyone, again, just how quickly that sentiment can change. How from one minute it's AI boom and everything going to the moon to the next minute people thinking, well, it's the end of the world and the stock market's going to finish and we're all going to go back down to crazy levels never seen before. And nothing really kind of, you know, enhances that sentiment and kind of improves it by showing that some of the things you see in the media and some of the channels you see here on YouTube, mainly in the US, I have to say, but there's certainly been lots of flames in thumbnails, as you would have seen from those channels. Now, just diving into some of the kind of winners and losers in this space, Supermicro still leads on best performers year to date if you just have a look here. Um, but it is down almost 30% from those highs. Nvidia having a similar story, making headlines because they lost $200 billion of their market cap in a single day. I mean, that's what happens when you're such a big company and you lose 10% of your market cap. But you know, those headlines, you know, you don't lose money in kind of a physical way. It's just the, the value of the company, but it, it does make good headlines. Now, obviously that, that is a 10% drop. It's down 16% for the month, but it's showing itself again that it can rebound just as quickly. This is always going to be an interesting stock now, one with lots of people's eyes on. Where this one goes in the next couple of weeks is going to be very interesting. Now, on to what's happening over the next couple of weeks. We are going to go into earnings season now, and I think this next couple of weeks is going to be really important about what the market does, certainly in the short term. In the long term, I'm not too fussed, to be honest, but definitely in the short term, it's going to be interesting. Big tech, I think there's going to be lots of eyes on those companies to make sure that they're actually going to be delivering on all the promises and all the share price <laughs> appreciation that's been built in over the past few weeks. And of course, the big one that lots of many retail investors and popular um, people here on YouTube will be focusing on will be the likes of Tesla, which by the time this video comes out, the earnings will already come out. Lots of people are expecting them to be very poor indeed. How much of that is priced in? I have no idea. It's certainly a very, very controversial stock at the moment. Its performance is almost the worst in the whole S&P 500. They may have regained that bottom spot now if I just put that up on screen as you can have a look here. Certainly, it's one I personally worry about in terms of the amount of people who follow it from a retail perspective who bake in their entire life savings here. I don't think anyone should be going into any individual stock with all of their investments. I think that's an awful, awful, awful decision. And unfortunately, it's pumped by a lot of grifters and a lot of people with bad intentions. But hey, it gets a lot of clicks, it gets a lot of views. Now, just before we talk about the UK market, I will just briefly touch on Bitcoin. It's got an interesting time at the moment. Those Bitcoin nerds out there will know Bitcoin has now gone through that halving event. Now, this is the event which happens, which means that the rewards for miners is now chopped in half from what it was before. In theory, this should mean that the supply of Bitcoins going onto the market is reduced in half if everything kind of stays the same. And then the demand, if it remains the same, should then kind of put prices up overall. Much of this you can argue is already baked in, but it is interesting to see those price movements. And at the moment, although as much as you might want Bitcoin to be a store of value and kind of treat it that way, it still very much goes along with the rest of the market. If the market's up, Bitcoin's up. If the market's down, Bitcoin's down at the moment. But always interesting to keep a close eye on that one. Now here in the UK, a similar story, but also some more interesting things to talk about. As often, I struggle to talk about many things going on in the UK market because it is quite boring and not much happens. However, UK inflation days, let's talk about that very quickly at the moment. So did come in slightly hotter than expected. It is you know, improving, so the rate of inflation is going down, inflation is still going up. It's always an interesting thing we see reported in the news. Um, it's almost portrayed like prices are going down, but so long as the rate of inflation is a positive one, it means prices are more expensive than they were the year before. And unfortunately, because in the last years that we've seen had inflation kind of in the 10% realm, you're seeing a 3.5% rise on top of a 10% rise already which then compounds over many years and actually means prices are significantly higher for certain things. Obviously, no doubt, 
a lot of you out there will know how much food prices have gone up, for example, energy, etc., all those kind of things. Now, one of the things people are mostly concerned about is how sticky this inflation is going to be and how high we're going to have to keep interest rates for a very long time. Now, the higher we keep those interest rates, that will pass through to not only the mortgage market, personal loans, car loans, anytime you need to get a credit. Um, mortgages, especially, are going to be one of the worst hit areas if you are going to have to remortgage in the next couple of years, which I think I believe is around 1.6 million households over the next year or so having to do that, your interest rates are going to be significantly higher than they were just a couple of years ago, which is going to mean your payment is going to be much, much higher. But also, one thing we don't touch on a huge amount is UK government borrowing costs just to service their debt as they as they take out more and more debt also goes high as well. So it's a really, really careful balance to strike. But, but if you just have a look at what's going on in the markets at the moment, there are bets that kind of rate cuts are going to be expected toward the kind of summertime at the moment. They could always come earlier, but around that kind of August, September time is the first expectation from the markets that we are going to see a kind of a 25 basis point cut. But look out for that. But it's going to be very interesting times at the moment, both here in the UK and over in the US. Now, what about the good old FTSE 100, which I normally kind of skip over very quickly and say nothing's much happened. Here we have an interesting story this month. Now have a look here at the moment, it's up 1.5% at the time of filming. I will put up the latest chart on screen now as I actually edit the video because it could be slightly different. Now, year to date, 2100 is actually up 4%, at least on a price basis. Actually not all bad considering everything going on. However, the real story is actually kind of, kind of buried in the details of why this stock market has gone up. Now two things, it's had hit a new all-time high of just over 8,000 points, which is really, really interesting. Again, you wouldn't have expected that. That's kind of snuck up on us. But a second thing which we need to have a look at of why this has done that is that the dollar and the pound to dollar exchange rate, the pound has been getting weaker against the dollar. I'll put this up on screen now, as you can see, for the last month. And what this does is actually increases the amount of those international earnings, the value of those international earnings, because lots of them get converted into dollars into pounds. Therefore, when the pound is weaker, you can get more of those international earnings. Now, if you didn't already know, the FTSE 100's international earnings are around that kind of 70%-ish at the moment. Could be a few percent swung either side at the moment. But that has a huge effect. The FTSE 250 is also affected, but it's around 50%, if I'm not mistaken from memory. So there's a less exposure there. But that is one interesting thing to keep an eye on. That doesn't mean necessarily that the UK economy is, is flying and going ahead and companies are doing well. It just means that the pound is weaker. So it's kind of the detail of the story that you're not missing out. And it's very interesting to, to understand why that's happening. It doesn't mean we should all pile into the FTSE 100 and pile into UK stocks. But it is actually, I guess, nice to see, you know, as somebody from the UK for the FTSE 100 finally doing a little bit better. But anyway, that is the reason. And it's always good to know what's happening. OK, with news out of the way, let's dive straight into the portfolio now. OK, so I've just logged into my Vanguard account here. Now, for many of the kind of viewers which are going to be coming on board now, I will have many newer viewers. I will just repeat myself a few times. Some of the regular viewers will already know what's going on with my accounts that I share every single month here on YouTube. So with Vanguard right now, at the time of filming, I have both my pension here, my self-invested personal pension, and I also have a Stocks and Shares ISA. However, that Stocks and Shares ISA is in the process and it's already been sold um, as moving to Invest Engine. So if you do want to watch my other portfolio update, feel free to go and watch that one after this video. Now, if I just jump over quickly to the investments tab, you can see here how I have my investments structured and it is a very simple indeed. Now you will see two things here because this is taking into account everything inside the pension and everything inside the ISA. So you will see finally for the first time that cash is now taking up a big chunk. That's because everything in the ISA has already been sold and is in the process of being transferred. So I'm expecting this any day now to then be transferred over to Invest Engines platform to my stocks and shares ISA over there. So that will just go obviously to zero and I have no cash left in the account and nothing left in my ISA. However, everything used to be invested in this single fund here, this FTSE Global All Cap Index Fund, the accumulation version. As many of you may know, and I will put this up on screen now, what this fund actually includes. It's a global fund, it's a passive fund, and includes all of the biggest and some of the smallest companies in the global stock market. Thousands and thousands of companies from all around the world. It's purely passive. It also provides um, no income from that perspective. It just reinvests any dividends that the fund collects from all of those companies that it invests in. Very, very nice and simple. Relatively low fees. There are ways to make your fees a little bit cheaper from some of the other investments on the platform. But from a relative perspective, it is relatively cheap and nice and simple too. 
and something like when it's going to be in your self-invested personal pension, something that you can't touch and can't take out for a very, very long time. Certainly from my perspective, this will be, you know, many decades away. I just want a very much set and forget solution there. Just having a look now in the performance tab, this is one of my favorite tabs, just to kind of have a look at, just to show the, the roller coaster that is the ride that you need to go on with investing. Now I am expecting us to be slightly not near those all time highs we were in the month before. And if I just have a look on the graph here, you can see we did hit just into and just over the 64,000 pound mark. And I will put that up on dollars as well, because I know some of you'd like to see that in dollars from international viewers. Hello from everyone watching abroad. Now, as you can see, we did have a little bit of a dip and then back into a slight recovery, just over 63,000 pounds. If I just break things down from a monthly perspective, it's always interesting and you can go back as far as you want in the Vanguard account. It is always interesting as well, the longer term you are as an investor, just going back and reminding yourself what you've had to put up with, especially as the ride isn't always going to be straight up. Even if you had the best period in history of 20, 30 or 40 years, you're still going to have some horrible drawdowns during that time period. So you just have to get used to that, looking at these things. You almost want to be colorblind and just completely ignore everything. But you can have a look here in the month of April of how much kind of the market has, you know, lost us in terms of our investments and where we are. But cumulative returns here still well into the green when I transferred all of my pensions into this account. Now, as we're in a new financial year now, since the 6th of April, also always one thing worth mentioning is I remember I did do a guide of kind of the best stocks and shares ISA platforms, which you can have a watch after this video if you haven't seen before. But also one thing worth reminding all of you on is there are some cool bonuses which you can get at the moment from some of the platforms that I use. Don't forget you've got the cashback and also you've got kind of a bonus match from some of the platforms at the moment. So do check one those ones out. They are in my best stocks and shares ISA guide and many of their bonuses end at the end of this month. So if you are planning on opening your own stocks and shares ISA or you might be opening another stocks and shares ISA because you can now do that this tax year finally. You can have as many as you want. I wouldn't recommend probably having a dozen or so of them because things might get a bit complicated. As always remember I'm not a financial advisor. I just kind of give my own opinions and thoughts here on YouTube. But you can now open as many stocks and shares ISAs as you like. So from my view at least I think it's good to make the most of the platforms and make the most of those offers. Nothing beats free money when it comes to investing, especially if you're going to be moving from a legacy company, for example, and want to get some free boosted cash for your investments. Now, future plans moving forward, although my SIP is a pretty much set and forget and it's mainly based from old workplace pensions, I do want to actually contribute a bit more to this from my own limited company. So I am going to whether that happens next month or the month after, I want to kind of make semi kind of regular contributions into um, my pension from my company. Um, it's one of the things I guess many of you out there who do run your own business or run your own company have to think about because when you're an employee, it's very easy because you have a pension scheme set up and you can work out how much you want to contribute every month. But the moment you become a, kind of a director of your own company, you kind of have to figure that out yourself. So I do want to start contributing a bit more to that because a pension is a great way, not only from a, a tax perspective, being tax efficient, but also if you're taking money out of your company as well, you do get the benefits there of saving some corporation tax. So just some kind of things there. I know not all of you will kind of have to think that way, but it is something that I would like to kind of just regular, regularly invest and make sure I'm putting in as much as possible while making sure that I also uh, maximize or try and maximize my ISA as well. With all things, everything's a very much a careful balance. I have done videos before as well, on pros and cons of SIPs versus ISAs. I think we do, I do need to go into a, an in-depth guide at some point. Many of you have been asking me and I have said I'm going to do this at some point. A bit more of an in-depth guide, maybe even a series on I think pensions generally and self-invested personal pensions because there is so much to know here and, and as I said in a, previous comment, in, in a previous comment, I do think it's a huge minefield and actually it, there, there is so much to learn. I'm of course not perfect at all and I don't know all of the information so I may, need to make sure that I I'm kind of well researched on that topic before I produce a video like that because things can get very, very complicated very, very quickly. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave up some videos on screen now that I've talked about, hopefully, if I can remember, and I will see you in the next video. As always, thanks so much for watching and happy investing.